Do you like explosions? Did you decide to gamble your life savings away? No, no, I'm in the middle of something right now. What do you, what do you mean? I need to do that right now? And you're sure this is gonna make it better? Okay. Do you like explosions? Did you gamble away your life savings and get happy when your wife left you because it meant more time for slots? Have you ever wanted to see a multi-mirror character die in one hit to a blue mob? If so, then you've come to the right place, Exile. With this new insane farming strat, we don't measure our profits in divines per hour. We measure it in mage bloods per hour. This strat will have your computer crying for help and have you lining GGG's pockets with all the stash tabs you're gonna need to hold all of this insane loot. So for the price of a like, subscribe, and a follow, you too can make so much money and stop being a broke pathetic loser. Loser. Wait a minute! Expedition is a type of content that you can come across in maps and even in the campaign. These are laid out so that there is an NPC in the middle surrounded by the comforting sights of Skulls on Six and ugh, reading. And how are you gonna get this loot, you might ask? Oh, these aren't homemade. They were made in a factory. A bomb factory. They're bombs. Place these bombs around and it will highlight in green what is going to be uncovered. Make sure to read the downsides of the remnants you're blowing up to assure you aren't completely breaking your build. Once you lay out all the bombs, you can hit the red trigger in the middle near the NPC, and in placement order, they will explode and uncover the chests or mobs underneath. Each mob and chest will only receive the benefits of the remnants that were blown up either with or before them, so they will get harder as the bombs go off. Kill the monsters, get the booty, and dip out of there. Money, money, money. Doing enough expeditions, you will receive the various currencies, each of which is dependent on who is running the expedition. When you kill harder monsters and open up chests, you will see these currencies flash above them and then disappear. These do not go into your inventory, but immediately teleport into your bag of holding. And no, you are not allowed to make black hole bombs with it. The rare of these currencies are the reroll currencies. These drop as actual items you need to pick up and will only drop the reroll currency that corresponds to whoever is running the expedition. Speaking of our bomb disciples, let's meet each one of them. Full Metal Alchemist. So in absolutely no order that totally isn't worst to best, we have the first NPC, Gwenon. Gwenon gives you an inventory to choose from where every item is unidentified and you cannot see the rarity of that item that you will get. Once you buy an item from her, it will randomly choose to be either a normal, magic, rare, or unique item of that same base. To reroll her inventory, you will use these dice looking things that are totally not completely worthless. Gwenon used to be very good for Gambas since she can technically give you a headhunter, mageblood, squire, etc. But her rates were gutted so hard that unless you are completely willing to just throw money into an open furnace, just ignore her. Full Metal Alchemist. Rog is a bit difficult to rate. In the wrong hands, this man is a menace to all the Redditors that don't understand how crafting works. And in the right hands is the reason that Redditors complain about how other people make so much money off him, but they are just chosen by GGG to never craft a good item. Rog presents you with an inventory of items, each of which already has some stats on them. You can peruse these items and then choose one to craft on. Rog will then give you several menus with different options that he will do to the item. You can choose to either let Rog have his way with an item, or skip it and go on to the next step, making sure to note that if you skip, then the next step you will either need to take the item or let Rog have his way with it again. Rog can make some incredibly powerful items. His crafting lets you see exactly what he will be doing and removing so people who are aware of what stats are good on what items can abuse this early for easy profit. That being said, you should never try to actually get an item for your build off Rog. It's nice if it happens, but at the end of the day, it's very random and trying to just make the best overall item to sell is the better choice. He He's good early, but mid to late league, his crafting methods are usually beaten by simply buying a fractured base and essence spamming. Full Metal Alchemist. Father Danning is a respectable man. He goes to bed at 10 p.m. every night, gets up to do his respectable job, and makes sure that he is never making his problems a hassle for others. He's also kind of a pimp, since all he really does is give you access to other NPCs. Danning lets you buy the currency and reroll currency for the other three NPCs, and is the one that you would think is the best if you're stupid and wrong, because that title goes to... Full Metal Alchemist.
If Danning is the respectable and stern father figure, then Tujin is Mark Wahlberg in Daddy's Home. Cause this dude is a loose cannon that you can't help but just keep coming back to. Tujin presents you with an inventory of random currency adjacent stuff and gives you the opportunity to haggle with him to buy it for cheaper. This is where reroll currency is very important because in order to get a big profit you will need to reroll possibly hundreds of inventories to get a big drop. That being said, he still does provide bubblegum currency that is very easy to liquidate and honestly the most hassle about this process is just the time that it takes. I often refer to this as going on a date with Tujin, firstly so that my friends are aware to not bother me during my private time, but also because it leaves me just as drained as going on a normal date. Because Tujin, at the end of the day, is the manipulative boyfriend, and during these dates he will c and disappoint you at every turn. But what can I say? His goods always keep me crawling back for more. Shut up, clock in and load up. The last notable things are logbooks. If you find yourself getting very little vendor currency while doing these throughout your map, then this is where you need to turn to. Logbooks randomly drop throughout expeditions or can be sold by Danning, and it leads you to a map that is really just Expedition's Big Brother. And we're not talking about Arthur Big Brother, this is more like 1984 Big Brother, cause holy do these things have hands and make you feel like shit. It's basically just an expedition with like 20 bombs, and you can roll for extra quant, so, again, just don't make them break your build and your golden. Atomic, I call her I'm only mentioning this because a lot of people's main gripe with what holds its grips on me is placing the bombs is annoying. Well, 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 do I have an option for you then? Assuming no reworks happened since this video, on your atlas tree we have the Big Bomb node, which will either be called Big Bomb or Sloppenheimer and has absolutely no other names. This lets you place one Big Bomb and then blow it up. The cons, you can't really avoid bad remnants without sacrificing some good ones, and all the monsters have all of the buffs. The pros are... If you watched my League Starter video, first off, thank you so much. Did you like your stay? Can I get you some coffee, tea? But you might have noticed this comment that I made. I sat there going for chess for the first four leagues of farming expedition, wondering why I wasn't making any money. Don't be stupid. Don't be me. There were a few people who didn't realize that in expeditions, going for chess is usually against the council's desires. The best things you can get from chess are either gambler fuel, sharp rocks, or fractured items. It is a much better idea to go for runic monsters, which are the big skull stick ones. These runic monsters can get a lot of buffs from remnants, and as a result will be incredibly difficult, but will pay out with substantially more and better loot. So, go for runic monster buffs, die, slay some monsters, die, open up some chests you accidentally got, die, pick up the loot, die. Once you collect the currency, then either give our daddy some love or sell it to another one of his victims for mad cash. That's about all you need to know to start farming like a god in Path of Exile. Thank you all for watching and good luck blowing up those fat stacks of cash.